In this video we're going to look at retaining walls. Uh, you recall that a retaining wall, uh, the main function of a retaining wall is to allow soil to stand at a vertical slope. So the retaining wall is retaining the soil so it's holding it up. And there's different ways of doing that. There's gravity, so the weight of the wall is resisting the soil force. So remember the soil that's standing in a vertical face is um, exerting a force forward, trying to fall over, and the weight of the retaining wall is stopping it from tipping or, um, or pushing the retaining wall. You can also uh, pile the wall, so you can put a uh, pile down, and so the, um, the wall is resisting the force by a cantilever action. Uh, there is the um, embedment in the soil and it's resisting it by that. Uh, you can increase that by anchored walls which we can look at in a minute. A cantilevered wall um, is like a gravity wall except that it has this nib on it which allows the weight of the soil uh, above the nib to actually be um, mobilized in resisting the soil overturning and pushing forces as well. And as I mentioned the last one is an anchored wall. There's a variation on the piled wall uh, it means that there's not so much uh, that the uh, the wall is anchored back into the soil which means that it provides an intermediate point of support and it may well be an act, um, working together with a cantilever action with uh, piles into the ground as well. Uh, different types of gravity retaining walls, gabions, mass blocks, masonry walls, reinforced earth, crib walls, concrete walls. They all um, rely on their own weight to um, provide uh, stability for the soil. Let's look at a few of those. So gabion walls are basically rock filled wire baskets. So you can see these wire baskets are all made up ready to go. They arrive on site as flat pack so they're all flattened out. You open them up, you wire them together, you put them all together. Um, so you can see that these ones here are all wired up but they haven't actually got any rocks in them they're putting them into position and then they usually use a digger or a loader to bring rocks up to the um, the gabion wire basket and it needs to be placed by hand it needs to be um, like uh, each rock needs to be locked in with the others and it's not something you can do when you just tip it from a machine so it is labor intensive but uh, all you need is an excavator or a loader and the end product is a wall like this e each one of those gabions is one meter tall so that's um, five meters high so you can go quite high with a ret uh, gabion retaining wall notice that it is stepped, it is slightly benched, it goes back about 100-200 mils at each one just to make it just that little bit more stable uh, but on top of that there is a road there uh, gabion walls are also very useful for rivers uh, because they, um, if the foundation settles then the gabion wall will just move down with it as opposed to say a more rigid wall like a masonry wall which will crack if the foundation moves. Mass blocks uh, once again um, use their weight to resist the, um, the soil load. Uh, they are precast um, concrete structures delivered to site on trucks uh, and then um, load into place by in this case an excavator or it could be the high ab connected to the truck or it could be a specialized crane. Each one of those weighs two to three tonne so it does take quite a bit of lifting but you can see they just stack them together like building blocks. Uh, once they're in location in where they're supposed to be uh, you can see these ones here they fill them up with sand or concrete um, just to add that extra bit of weight to them as well. So you can see these guys just stacking it up like, uh, um, like building blocks. And it gives quite a nice finish when it's done. Uh, the trouble is that they are quite heavy, so you maybe get about um, 10 to 12 per truck. So it does take quite a bit of cartage to get these things to site. And there's a picture of um, that picture we had before showing how attractive it is. And you can let the grass grow over top of it start, so it starts getting a bit of a natural look to it. Masonry walls basically just a block wall so um, they do rely on a good foundation so normally you have a, a concrete slab foundation on them and then it's just a matter of um, building uh, a block wall uh, reinforcing uh, in through the middle so once the blocks are all in um, the cavities are filled with concrete and it forms quite a stable and attractive looking wall 
a variation on that is keystone blocks. Um, these ones are all individual blocks, they come together. You can see there's little nibs there. Uh, you put those in and it allows the keystone blocks to all lock together. Uh, the shape of them allows them to be curved or straightened and they have got quite an effect, attractive face. So for low walls up to about 1 to 2 metres um, they are quite a good option. They are very labour intensive, they have to be placed by hand. So it does take um, quite a bit of labour effort to, to put keystone blocks together. A crib wall. Once again um, the cribs themselves can be put together by hand. Um, each one of these cribs is designed to be able to be um, lifted and carried and manhandled and put into position by one person. Uh, there are two different types, timber, um, the components are very light, uh, and concrete. So you can see that um, they, they have headers and stretchers, so the stretchers are the ones that go into the wall and the headers are the ones that sort of go together. So once again it all locks together like a, um, a Lego set uh, and then you fill it up. With crib walls it is quite essential that you have a stable foundation uh, because they can start um, falling apart if, if, if they start settling. So here's a picture of a crib wall being constructed and you can see they have um, boxed up the uh, the foundation slab and they'll be putting some reinforcing mesh down and then concreting it uh, and then once they've done that they'll start building the crib wall. Notice that it is canted back so it's down at a 1 and 5, 1 and 4 so the crib wall actually leans into the hill which means its centre of balance is back from the hill and it has more resistance against overturning forces. So once you put all the crib um, blocks in place then you fill it up with um, uh, gravel uh, scoria and you can see that in this case here they're doing it with a little loader. Uh, when they get a bit high you've got a bit of a problem there whether the loader can reach or not. Um, sometimes they can get up to five six meters in which case uh, you have to use quite a large digger or build a ramp to allow it to get up to that level and then remove the ramp as you go. A reinforced earth wall um, is another very effective way of stabilizing earth. Basically it's a soil sausage. So what you've got here is a geotextile a geogrid which is providing holding up uh, that, that little bit of soil. So you put down the geotextile, you lay the soil, you wrap the geotextile or the, the, the grid, there's the grid there, you wrap the grid around it and the, there's geotextile on the outside of it. Uh, and then you lay the next layer, and then the next layer, and then the next layer. So the geogrid and the geotextile are both supporting each one of those layers as you go up um, and providing the ten tensile force to resist um, the, uh, the tendency of the soil to want to fall forward. And the good thing about um, all of these gravity walls, um, gabion walls, uh, reinforced earth walls is that they can all be planted out. And you can see this one is really quite high. This is going up to about 10-20 metres um, with minimal benching as it goes. So they can be quite um, effective. Uh, concrete walls, once again pre-cast concrete slabs usually, but um, they can be cast in situ. So it's sort of boxed up and it's built just like a structure really. So it's got um, reinforcing and it's got concrete. Um, another way of resisting soil force is by having piles. Um, the most common way of doing that in New Zealand is using um, timber pole walls. So you've got a 200 to 300, sorry, 100 to 300 millimeter diameter H4 post. H4 is the treatment for in ground. Um, nowadays it's more like H5 to sort of if you're in a marine area, uh, which means that it's not going to rot in the ground. Um, you encase it in concrete or um, you can actually have rammed earth but concrete works best. Um, in behind it is uh, log rails or they can be um, planks as well sort of nailed to the inside. So you can see the poles are set down to the ground providing that cantilever action and the rails are in behind it sort of um, butting up against the poles and, and, and retaining the earth. And behind it you normally need a drain coil and drainage material. Uh, retaining walls can fail if you don't have proper drainage because the hydrostatic pressure can actually add that extra force on it 
to push it over. In this case here, this wall here, you can see that there's a timber um, wall and on top of that there's a reinforced earth wall. So sometimes the walls can be used in conjunction with each other. Uh, here's it being um, constructed. They are the poles are either driven or bored, so the picture we showed before uh, was bored with um, concrete backfill, or they can be driven into the ground using a pole driver as shown here. Uh, once that's been done, you can install the, um, the rails in behind it by nailing them on. Uh, the trick there is remembering that you have to be able to swing a hammer or, um, or a nail gun, get a nail gun in behind it to be able to um, make the nail connection. Sheet piles um, are a temporary, usually a temporary measure. Uh, sheet piles are made out of steel, so they're not very good for um, being in the ground for a long period of time. They will rust, um, especially around where the groundwater goes up and down. But they are very good for um, temporary support of structures. So you can see that there's a um, a vibrating um, a vibrating connection connected to a crane, hanging off a crane. It picks up the um, sheet pile and drives it into the ground. There's a couple of videos on Moodle that are worth seeing, um, watching how they're done. The trick with that is to get the first one in place and then the ones after that start locking. So you can see these guys have got a level there and they're just checking the verticality of it as it goes down. Uh, post and panel. Uh, once again the um, posts can be driven into the ground before excavation commences um, and then the panels can be um, inserted as you go down. So in this case here, this is a permanent um, wall um, and it may well have been constructed after uh, constructed and backfilled but this one here was constructed to aid excavation so these were driven, the, the ground surface used to be around here uh, at the top of the wall. Um, the H piles were driven and then as they went down the um, the rails, the pole rails were added uh, as they went down so they were continually supporting the the wall. So in this case the post and panel was used as um, shoring. Our secant walls provide uh, provide um, shoring during the um, construction and can be used as permanent or re remain in place unlike um, sheet poles which are removed afterwards. These remain in place and provide uh, permanent um, support later on. So what you have here is you um, bore um, the, the first one, so the one's number one, so you bore that one, 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 one. Then you go back and you, and then you fill it up with concrete, let that concrete set. Then you bore the twos, that one, that one, uh, that one and that one. So you can see that they're boring part of one out as well. Uh, once again you fill them up with concrete and when that sets you bore the third one which connects two and one together and provides a continuous wall. Once again you fill it up with concrete, in this case they put um, steel in there as well. Uh, and when the concrete all sets you have a permanent wall all the way down. So you would do this before you start excavating and when you do start excavating you've got a stable um, vertical face that you can excavate against. Uh, later on, this is often used for um, basements of buildings, later on you'll put some precast panels on the face of it and you've got a stable permanent structure um, supporting the, the basement um, walls. Another variation on that is diaphragm walls. Once again, before you start excavating, you build the wall in the ground. So in this case here, they're using a, a grab attachment on a crane. Um, digging out um, little slots, uh, lowering the uh, reinforcing cage in and then concreting it up. Uh, then they will go through and excavate the bits between the concrete bits that have done, been done. Once again lower the cage in and concrete them together. Uh, so at the end of it, before you even start excavating, you'll have a solid wall um, along the whole length of the excavation. Now that's quite often used for motorways, so for the um, Victoria Park uh, cut and cover tunnel it was used uh, and also for the entrances to the Waterview tunnel so you can see that those are diaphragm walls there. You can see that once you get the roof in you've actually got a top support on that diaphragm wall as well.